Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome to this NPTEL course on 20th century fiction conducted by Dr. Avishek Pari. My name is Shikriti Shannal and uh, I am one of the TAs or teaching assistants for this course. Today we will be discussing modernist poetry uh, with reference to the two poems of T.S. Eliot that Sir has already previously discussed, um, namely the Preludes and Love Song of J. Alfred Prufock. So, uh, before getting into the poems, uh, uh, just we would like to, I would like to discuss some of the key features of modernist poetry in general and why it is so relevant in the current settings. Uh, so, in the recent years, we see that there is a renaissance of uh, revival of interest in modernist literature and specifically in modernist poetry and the new modernist uh, st studies greatly differ from the new critical approach of the 1940s uh, with its insistence in the historical uh, juncture and the conjecture in which modernism developed uh, against the understanding of the text as an autonomous uh, entity or a body. And the, the focus was in the material uh, culture of modernity and the questions of race and gender which were previously neglected came to the foreground. Uh, we also see that in the new modernist uh, research, the panorama of the genre of modernist studies itself expanded. So, there was this expansion of modernist canon uh, which now incorporated the writers of Harlem Renaissance and also female writers uh, such as Mina Loy and Hilda Doolittle. With the, when we talk about modernism or modernist writing uh, in the sense of this course, we are referring to a set of ideas and beliefs. Uh, and attitudes about life that are emerging in the period of time in the uh, first half of the 20th century. Uh, but we are not interested in taking all the authors or the writers who were writing during this period uh, because modernism is more like an umbrella term which uh, incorporates the different schools uh, of modernism, uh, but under one chain of or, or multiple sets of beliefs and uh, habits and styles of writing, but we which have a common affiliation and which come together to uh, and when writers come together and become affiliated to a certain movement. So, when we talk about the term modernism or when we talk use the term modernist poetry, so we are using modernist uh, not as a label to that uh, to the particular author's writing in that particular uh, period of time. It is uh, a commentary on their uh, ideologies and beliefs and the styles of writing that was coming together to propose an idea of society and an idea of art. The term modernism, the label or the title modernism was given uh, to these artists or authors and writers by uh, American and English critics in the 1920s and this is not a term that they themselves, they coined for themselves. So, Again to repeat myself, the idea of modernism or modernist writing is, uh, is more of an umbrella term which uh, incorporates different sets or schools of modernism which come under a general generic label uh, and, and reproduce a certain thoughts and styles of writing that are very unique to that particular age. So, in 1921 T.S. Eliot declared that uh, and I quote, poets in our civilization as it exists as pr at present must be difficult, uh, unquote. And precisely uh, when we see in the later subsequent year when a Wasteland uh, Eliot's poem is published, we see what he actually means with its multiple references and allusions and several pages of notes which come in the end of the poem. They uh, somehow take this poem back to the classroom and uh, something that needs to be seriously worked on and studied and something that does not have the uh, fluidity of that uh, uh, the Elizabethan kind of po uh, Elizabethan poetry or it does not have the framework or the structure of uh, say Victorian writing. So, when we talk about the modernist poems, uh, we see that they are two schools of thoughts believe that they uh, 
come for two different reasons. So, one school believes that because uh, modernist poetry talks about the sense of isolation and fragmentation uh, and it is it is telling telling us a hard uh, story or truth that it is unable to tell itself and it does not have the classical realist framework or any other uh, you know contemporary frameworks that we are aware of. So, it plays with its style, with its structure and form. So, writing becomes difficult. So, the, there are allusions to different themes and meanings that uh, are as at the same time historical and as well as contemporary and the banal and the profound are juxtaposed together and this constant juxtaposing of different elements uh, can be shocking, it can uh, produce an effect of shock like the metaphysical conceit for example. Uh, but it also a certain school of uh, theorists believe or critics believe that uh, this just shows uh, the uh, high handedness of the modernist poets and their uh, insistence on, on being a class apart. And it is this difficulty that uh, we are going to, we are trying to understand through uh, this particular session today in our discussion of the poems in hand. So, experience uh, when we talk about modernist poetry uh, and the reading of modernist poetry uh, no matter how difficult it there is a feeling of immersion in the text that we have. So, there is no clear distinction between what we are seeing and what this position from which we are invited to see it. Uh, so, when we talk about the subject and the object of the poetry, there is no clear distinction between who is the subject and who is the object, what are the central features and what are the marginal ideas, uh, which is the whole and which is the fragment. So, all these distinctions and binaries that uh, generally or conventionally hold our understanding of uh, any text or any narrative, we see a complete dissolution of these boundaries uh, in the text that we read, especially if we take uh, into account the two texts that we are talking about today, Preludes and the Love Song of J. Alfred Prufock. We see that uh, when uh, in the both the poems then the things are being said and things are being done, but most of the times we are not sure who is saying those things or uh, what is the importance of what is being done. Even grammatically there is an inconsistency of uh, the subject and the object and most of the times it becomes hard for us to discern who the subject of the poetry is and who the object is. So, in the absence uh, of a traditional framework, uh, literary framework, uh, for example, like the classic realist uh, literary framework, it is very difficult often for uh, the readers to understand what is coming next and that this unpredictability is something that is very key to the modern modernist poetry. So, so we see in the sense that modernist poetry is one that does not believe in offering a frame, uh, a framework or a, a, a lens from which to read the poetry, it is more interested in immersing the readers in the work that is uh, in the work in question and we see there is this dissolution of the subject object of the uh, you and I and the there is a, a sort of continuity and a fluidity in, in these ideas that uh, they represent. And the readers might sometimes find it difficult to understand the poetry or it might become difficult to read uh, the poetry of this kind of sort uh, because our understanding of things and the world is uh, always marked by these distinctions that are dissolved in the poetry. Uh, the distinctions of you and I, the self and the other, the here and there. So, uh, all these distinctions that make up our uh, everyday life and our understanding, our rationale is uh, dissolved and they are challenged by modernist poetry where you cannot make these uh, clear cut distinctions and that is uh, also not the objective of the poetry. Modernist poetry uh, is written in fragments and the fragments, this uh, disorienting or disorganized fragments that make up the uh, sections of poetry, uh, they can be challenging themselves, but they serve a very unique purpose and, and they are uh, very much needed for the kind of uh, writing that is 
represented or the kind of writing that is articulated by these authors and poets. So, when especially talking about poetry, uh, when, even when you read uh, Preludes or the Love Song of G. Alfred Prufock, you see that there is a very uh, strange or queer sense of uh, fragmenting that is at play when uh, human beings are described uh, as merely say hands or feet. Uh, that, uh, a chief or key feature of uh, modernist poetry is uh, the idea of the fragments uh, and the poem are arranged as most of the poems are arranged as uh, disorganized or disoriented presentation of fragments. And this fragmentation is important because it uh, refers to the isolation of the modern world and the metropolitan society uh, which is consumerist, which is alienating in its structures and in its, uh, in, in its quality. And this fragment, uh, because there is no clear cut syntax or uh, there is no hard rigid boundary or framework as I previously mentioned. It is easier for these fragments to play with themselves and they do not have to be associated, uh, their meanings do not have to be associated to the immediate context in which they are the, uh, presented, uh, meaning the fragments. They can uh, afford to uh, connect and interconnect with themselves in multiple ways, uh, sometimes that are not uh, very obvious ways uh, and we ha a lot of reading has to go into it. Uh, since there is no self defining meaning and uh, there is no pre uh, conceived idea of meaning and concept uh, or, or even uh, any obligation to explain a moral truth. So, the, these fragments can become multiple and they can uh, play and touch various discourses and undercut their me, uh, undercut the meanings of different discourses and in m multiple ways that uh, that are not uh, a conception of any a fixed nature of truth or what is the center of the universal idea of truth the fragments are not a subcomponent of any you know larger idea or of any grand narrative or the any narrative master plot. So, the fragments have their own function, functionality and uh, they function or they perform the job to bring out the isolation and the alienation that is rooted, deeply rooted in the metropolitan, the modern metropolitan society and they have the ability to merge the distinction between the center and the mar margins, the important and the unimportant. Uh, and the uh, and these varied uh, differences and binaries that are uh, that mark uh, previous poetries of previous uh, generations modernist poetry therefore is both an account of the individual's journey uh, in society and also the individual as a collective entity and um, which uh, represents the collective life of the modern uh, collective life of the modern metropolis so, when we talk about uh, the time, the idea of time in modernist poetry, we see that time is represented in a continuous fashion in a sense of the uh, past being a continuity uh, to the present and the time here is continuous, it is simultaneous and uh, it does not believe in leaving the past way back and it carries the past almost to the present. So, the experience of reading the modernist poetry is that of an ongoing process and one does not have to look back and forward, back and forward uh, every time and then the, there is this uh, fluidity and the flow which uh, you know Gertrude Stein calls the continuous present. And uh, even Ezra Pound uh, talks about all ages are being contemporaneous, uh, where we have the idea of the uh, ever present or the ev past that is ever new. So, uh, the, in, the mod in the context of the modernist poetry, we live among uh, simultaneous present times, uh, which is uh, again a very important or uh, a very unique feature of uh, modernist poetry. Uh, and this brings us to uh, what uh, Dr. Parui has previously discussed with us in the context of um, the love song of J. Alfred Prufock, the idea of the clock time and the psychological time. So, uh, which is uh, obvious uh, something that is very important and again something unique to the poetry of the modernists, uh, where we see that there is a difference or there is a distinction between what is the universal time or the worldly time and what is the personal time. So, this is personal versus a political uh, time that is uh, often being used 
here, even in the sense of the continuous present, there is this break between uh, the personal and what is the impersonal time. And this is very crucial in the context of poetry because uh, it shows us that uh, how our inner world, the time of our psychological time, the time of our inner world does not have the same rhythms and the same patterns of the time of the the universal time or the clock time and that can create a friction uh, and that friction makes it again difficult for us to make sense of uh, our the narrative of our own life and when we come follow the, the when we present an objective perspective following the clock time uh, narrating our life events chronologically there is a gap which is uh, the gap which is not addressed there is a there is a space which is not uh, uh, addressed when we are talking about the subjective experiences and these experiences the uh, the subjective or the personal understanding or interactions with the world and other human beings cannot be tapped into the clock time or the universal time and if it is it all only gives a partial uh, view of those experiences and those lived uh, felt emotions. When we look at uh, modernist poetry, its key feature is often a critique of society, but a critique that is not a direct critique. Uh, the critique of society or the uh, contemporary civilization, contemporary modern world of metropolis comes through the idea, the different imageries and the fragments that uh, we were talking about earlier. So, these imageries and symbols and fragments try to bring out the distorted and the disorderly nature of life in the metropolis, which is filled with drudgery and alienation and repetition uh, of everyday life and uh, things that are mostly uh, not in our control. So, we see uh, life moving on in its own pace and um, humans are uh, uh, mere performers who wake up and put on a mask and perform their day to day activities uh, in a much routine fashion. So, the repetition and the drudgery of the society of the metropolis is translated to the uh, repetition and drudgery of the everyday life of the characters or the subjects that we read in, uh, of in the poems. There is uh, the social disintegration and the uh, personal and the social disintegration which comes with contemporary civilization, which comes with bureaucracy and technocracy. The idea that the contemporary civilization uh, is a recipe for disintegration, both personal and social, uh, is very evident in modernist poetry. Modernist poetry, in modernist poetry, we see uh, a sense of uh, disintegration of both the personal and the social and the disintegration comes with the contemporary civilization. Though modernist or modernism has the word modern in it, we see that most of our writers and poets and critics are um, very critical of, of the bureaucracy and the technocracy that has overtaken the human world and uh, which has led to a reification and alienation of human beings which uh, again uh, Dr. Pari has uh, talked about in grave details. So, when we, uh, uh, when we say that uh, due to the technocracy and the uh, advancement of technology and machinery, the human life has become segregated and alienated and again very repetitive. And so, these uh, and when uh, we try to see human beings as a collective force, as a uh, uh, you know, uh, as not in indi not individual human beings, but but a collection or a section or group of people uh, who are invested in a particular um, area to reap some benefits for the society as well uh, or, or the society at large. We see that there is a commodification of the human beings themselves. Uh, even in the poems concerned, we see the inanimate objects like the streets or the birds. Uh, they are animated. They are given human attributes. While the human beings are described as uh, inanimate objects and just uh, 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 human beings are described in fragments, uh, just referring to their hands and feet or some part of their body or uh, in different movements. So, these again coming back to fragments. So, these fragments or this fragmented nature of poetry defines or uh, highlights the way the society and the personal uh, life of human beings are also being disintegrated due to this advancement in technology. Uh, 
the, the bureaucratic systems or uh, the structures that are operational in society or were operational in society during that time, they uh, completely disregarded the individual differences and uh, they projected human beings as a collective monogamous uh, identity uh, which is only uh, the objective of which is only to uh, produce material uh, or meet material needs and they are driven by exterior ends. Uh, so, th this culture of uh, emotional represent, uh, repression and uh, social atomization and the, the a kind of structure that uh, fits for all, uh, th this kind of structures are the ones that are critiqued in this modernist poetry and shows uh, highlights the uh, personal sides of these, uh, the emotional sides of uh, the side effects or uh, as we can say the socio-political implications of living a life that is uh, compartmentalized or uh, segmented in this particular fashion uh, of the modern day, where the human beings lose their uh, individuality and agency and uh, they any charge or responsibility of their own life. And what we have is a um, image of a man who is suffering, a man who is helpless and uh, just a victim of the forces of society and culture and performing his day to day life uh, without any subjective uh, investment in it, uh, in, a, in a very, very objective and superficial fashion. Talking about uh, modernist poetry, we see that because of the uh, difficulty of the subject uh, that they are dealing with to uh, the express expression of the subject that they are dealing with and in the absence of any uh, fixed framework or structure because uh, modernist poets like to play with their uh, writing and uh, hope to find or they are constantly seeking for a new mode or new medium through which to uh, articulate their writings because uh, the structures of the previous uh, eras or generations uh, just uh, don't, won't work anymore or won't suffice because the problems of the modern times or the times that they were writing are very different from uh, those of uh, say the romantic or the Victorian or the Elizabethan times. Um, so, uh, but, uh, but when we talk about the imageries and symbols and the different um, styles or techniques that are incorporated by the writers or the poets of the time, uh, especially we are talking about Eliot, we see that uh, the use of the metaphysical conceit is uh, very evident and prevalent in their writing. Uh, as uh, Sir has previously discussed, uh, the metaphysical conceit or uh, Eliot has uh, always been a great admirer and critique of the metaphysical writers like uh, Dunn and Marvel. And, uh, so, the idea of the conceit is uh, very important and relevant to the modern times as well because of its uh, uh, shocking uh, kind, uh, shocking characteristics and its at, uh, attribute that can uh, shock you or c catch you unawares. Uh, so, this, this uh, is a very useful technique that Eliot uses in both the poems that we are talking about today, uh, say preludes when he talks about, uh, to give you the exact line. And he talks about the burnt out ends of smoky days where uh, the end of the day is compared to the end of a cigarette and uh, which is an image which is uh, makes a lot of sense uh, the time of the modernity or the time of uh, uh, sorry in the modern times or in the metropoli uh, metropolis setting where you see at the end of the day uh, people uh, after work or uh, after working hours, uh, smoking in the streets and uh, almost that the, like the cigarette and the day and the activity of the and the humdrum of the day comes together, uh, ends together almost. And so, but this is uh, this kind of imagery is very different from uh, uh, comparing the end of the day, the usual comparisons that we have seen before and this end of the cigarette and the end of the day comes together to produce this beautiful yet shocking effect. We also see uh, conceit in uh, love song of uh, J. Alfred Prufock where uh, for say for example many conceits, for, but uh, one for example is measured out, I have measured out uh, my life with coffee spoons. Again the idea of measuring out life with coffee spoons is a very unique way of putting it and it also um, significantly shows uh, the negligible quality of life uh, in the sense that it can be measured in coffee spoons. That is 
as much as relevance uh, or importance that life needs or life has in the modern times. So, uh, uh, and also when we uh, talk about again in the context of uh, the uh, in talking about the difficulty of writing and reading modernist poetry, uh, we see uh, the question of the neurotic narrator coming in, which again we see uh, in the love song of G. Alfred Prufock as well as uh, we can draw parallels or connections with Heart of Darkness uh, by Joseph Conrad, where we see uh, the same kind of uh, a very nervous, a very unsure kind of narrator, which is very different from what we what we know of the uh, you know a, ve a very strong narrator of say a Victorian novel. Uh, so, this the narrators in the modern modernist texts they uh, are you know uh, very different uh, from the usual narrators that we are uh, uh, that we usually see and these narrators are presented or they present themselves as uh, again neurotic, very unsure, very nervous and uh, often uh, with very low skill, uh, very low skill level for narrating. And so, which again points to the fact that uh, to, uh, to the futility of life, to the futility of meaning itself. So, even words that are coming out of the narrators uh, and the, the writings and the narrat nar their narrative uh, often is futile and does not make any sense. So, even these um, poets in the two poems, uh, especially in the love song of G. Alfred Prufock, he says, uh, dare I say even if I say you would not understand me. So, this, this confusion between uh, the experience and the narration of that particular experience, we see find it in both heart of darkness uh, in the character of Marlowe and we also see it in the person, uh, the first person subject of uh, the love song of G. Alfred Prufock, where both are uh, unsure of how they are going to say and what they are going to say and uh, they are uh, pretty sure that in the end uh, no meaning or no fixed uh, concrete meaning is going to come out of the dialogue or the discussion or their narration of the poem. So, other uh, key features uh, or elements that we find in our readings of the poems are uh, that of synesthesia uh, in where uh, they beautifully uh, crisscross or uh, interconnect different uh, sensory uh, uh, cognitive uh, sen senses and cognitive understandings uh, where the smell and the sight and the touch. So, the tactile and the sensory uh, images every uh, uh, or senses come together to uh, produce an effect that is uh, very different from the uh, conven uh, conventional understanding of things. And we also see the idea of uh, the pathos in modernist poetry, where uh, two very different uh, terms or contradictory terms uh, are taken together or t expressed in a line. When we talk about the love song of J. Alfred Prufock, we see that there is a crisis of inhibition. The, uh, the subject wants to inhabit a particular space, where uh, and that particular space is a high society, a high culture space, uh, where uh, as, as he says, women come and go talking of Michelangelo. And Michelangelo here becomes a, a stereotypical image of a high art and uh, cultural sophistication. and. Uh, everything that is uh, uh, that belongs to the aristocracy and that belongs to the fashionable uh, part of society and the subject wants to belong to that uh, space but there is a constant uh, duality between uh, between his subjective understanding of himself his, the i and the objective i of as in the sense the world understands him and this this difference is uh, barely reconcilable and that is another reason uh, why the speech or the speaking or articulation is so difficult and the author exhibits or the narrator exhibits a kind of uh, neurotic temperament and a, a kind of uh, nervousness, a kind of uh, incom in incompatibility with the flow of uh, you know with the narrative flow that one would expect in a writing. So, all these the different techniques that we discussed that of the conceit and that of the uh, the neurosis in the uh, narrative technique and the uh, synesthesia and pathos. So, all these are different ways of um, 
trying to uh, articulate the complexity that modern life is, the metropolis uh, uh, setting is. And uh, it talks about the, the crisis of inhibition and the crisis of being able to uh, have meaning. Then therefore, there is this constant deferral, there is this constant procrastination because one never arrives at anything and one is constantly waiting for something to happen, but nothing happens and nothing of importance ever happens. And because there is no possibility of in life itself itself uh, is measured by coffee spoon. So, mm, the relevance or the importance or uh, the grandness of life and the concepts such as life and meanings and narratives are uh, lost in a setting in a modern day setting where everything is alienating, everything is uh, decadent and there is a inertia, there is this boredom and there is a repetition of the everyday consuming and everyday living the same life and becoming uh, becoming consumable and be becoming a commodity, humans becoming commodity themselves and humans consuming commodities outside. So, the entire material uh, setup of the modern day life is highlighted through these different uh, techniques that uh, we find in modernist poetry. The wasted quality of a metropolis is what uh, is highlighted in both these poems and we have uh, even when uh, we talk about fragmentation of the uh, say presentations of the human beings, we see there is this uh, fragmentation in the presentation of life itself and uh, which comes from a very uh, beautiful montage like uh, technique of uh, capturing the moments and capturing the different uh, activities of li everyday life and where a complete picture is never possible, but then all the snippets and uh, the montages and the uh, you know uh, clippings are only that we have at hand and they are representative of uh, the life in a metropolis, the drudgery and the monotony and the alienation that every human being bears in their heart and souls. <laughs>